Yeah, now it should be all right. Very good. So, um, here is, uh, uh, let me bring back what we did last time in a picture. Uh, so, here is the, uh, uh, the statement for uh, for uh, uh, SU two, uh, we have uh, we have a matrix uh, G one. This matrix this this G one stands here for the generate uh, for the matrix of the graph, uh, for instance, uh, a module like E8. Yes, so, uh, so this is a matrix which has, uh, for A, it's uh, something like zero on the diagonals and uh, one underneath and so forth. So uh, this matrix, since its eigenvalues are the sum of a unitary and its inverse, this matrix uh, is written as U1 plus 1 over U1, yes, a unitary. And uh, the formula for the, uh, for the essential, so we have two formulae here. One is for the essential paths. So this is uh, the matrix if you, so this, this goes from a vertex A here to a vertex B. Yes, on the graph, from a vertex A to a vertex B. Uh, now, uh, if you go at a distance, so if you go T1 to the power K, which means you go on the ribbon K floors down, yes, then you can count again the essential path from A to a point B, yes, the number of essential paths. So these are those numbers that we have computed, one, 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 then, I don't know, one, and uh, uh, so this would be something uh, that happens for the graph AN. For the graph, uh, for a graph like E8, in the case of SL2, the biggest number is six here, which can appear, yes. So, uh, the statement is the following, that you write your matrix G, this is your matrix G1, you write it as U1 plus U1 uh, inverse, and, uh, and then in order to go here, this matrix is going to be multiplied by T to the K, so that we get a power series. So uh, the matrix at the distance, the, the power series for the distance is U1 over 1 minus uh, T1 U1 uh, minus U1 inverse over 1 minus T1 U1 inverse over U1 minus U1 inverse. Yes, and uh, this is a sum over the vial group. So this is this is a permutation uh, one two, and this is a permutation two one. Yes, and uh, so you see the essential path. This is what we call fusion, and the result, which was uh, uh, given uh, to you as a, as an exercise. Uh, is, and it's still an exercise, but you should, you should just try to compute it. It's one over one minus T1 G1 plus T1 square. So, this is a power series. As you can see here, 
Yeah, it satisfies a recurrence relation of order two. Yes? One, the, this is what this denominator tells you. I don't know if you... Uh, have you worked with uh, power series, with generating series? Yes? So you recognize that it's a series, for instance, the, uh, the Fibonacci series has, has uh, something like this, yes, with some root of unity. What this tells you is that uh, the entries are going to satisfy the, ide the identity plus going two floors down, yes, is equal to, this, uh, to uh, the product with G1, yes? This is exactly the condition of, uh, of biharmonicity, yes? It tells you that if you sum something, if you take the sum of a number and the number two floors down, you get a number in the middle multiplied with the generator G1. Yes, so this is a biharmonicity. Now, um, uh, let's look a little bit here at the same. Oh, and the root in a product, let me write it as well. Uh, is it, uh, maybe I'll lift it just a little bit, the screen. The root in a product is going to be uh, sum like this, but without the, the numerators uh, and the signs. So it's going to be 1 over 1 minus T1 U1 plus 1 over 1 minus T1 U1 inverse. Yes, so uh, first of all, look at here the vial group. So this is U1 corresponds to the spin one half. So this is U1, it's the vector for the spin one half, but in exponential notation. If you uh, saw the formula used by Weil, the, what we have always an interplay here between the additive vectors Yes, and the fact that when you uh, use them for representations, they are exponentiated. That's because uh, the, the representations tensor and all that. So, so there's an exponential between the, the, the additive structure of uh, roots and weights and the structure of representations. Once again, you remember representations are tensored, yes? While the highest weights are added. So the representation vectors are exponentials of what you see additively here. So let's see what this gives. If you make the... Uh, so once again, the generator is this, yes? So you... Uh, you can do it by hand or write a piece of software that recovers the generate out of uh, that kind of sum. And what you will find out is, uh, is uh, the following. Let me see here. 2 minus T1 G1 over the same denominator uh, over 1 minus T1 G1 plus T1 square. So this is a generating function for the uh, inner product of a root with other roots. If you remember, for instance, for the case AN, the, um, let me remind you a little bit of, so here you have a diagonal, 1, 1, 2, 2, Three, three. So this uh, ribbon for the case AN, let me remind you, is the following. You take a matrix, it represents n by n matrices. You take a matrix, you n by n, you reproduce it periodically, 
you take here the diagonal and uh, in between, strictly in between the diagonal, so let's take here a specific case which is uh, uh, exactly n is equal to 4 here. Yes, so you take uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and so the ribbon that we were talking about is, is this one between the between two diagonals, yes? And as you see here, uh, this is the graph A3, if you notice. A3, the Duncan diagram A3, uh, times a period. Here, also notice the following. This is quite uh, important in So if you have a, a matrix unit, so the matrix units are 1, 1 here, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, uh, 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 4. Is this visible? Reasonably visible? Yes. So, and here you will have 2, 4, 2, 1. So remember, these are periodic. So this is 3, 4, 3, 1, 3, 2. And uh, uh, four one four two four three. This is so. This is our ribbon. You see now it starts again with one two, one three one four. So the ribbon is between these two copies of the diagonal. Uh, this is in a way a new way to look at matrices, if you want. So. Uh, when you teach uh, linear algebra, you could, uh, you could do it this way. Uh, now, notice something interesting here. So, uh, do you see that, the, that there are two times more anti-diagonals than elements on the diagonal? Can you see that the anti-diagonals are two times denser, right? Uh, what could be the reason in terms of the roots and weights of SL2, can you see? What are these and what are the others? Like this point on the diagonal. Do you see this one is between two elements of the diagonal, right? So they would be weights, exactly. So what you see here is that the diagonal, the diagonal, is made of weights of roots of SL2, yes? And they even happen to have the correct length here because the length is, if you take this to be one, the length here is square root of two, exactly the length of a root. Yes, so the, uh, however, the, the uh, anti-diagonals, which are the rows of the ribbon, cut the diagonal at weights of SL2. Yes? And in fact, the coordinate, so the diagonal coordinates So the, uh, uh, 
the coordinates, let's put it like this, the ribbon coordinates of uh, Eij which should be viewed as our root Hij on ribbon. So the ribbon coordinates of this are what? One coordinate is the distance from the diagonal. Can you see the horizontal coordinate on the ribbon is the distance from the diagonal? Since the diagonal is i equal to j, this would be j minus i. So horizontal, it's j minus i over 2. And vertical, so horizontal means here anti-diagonal. And vertical, which is in the diagonal direction, the coordinate is i plus j over 2. Yes, so this one, 1, 4, has 1 plus 4 over 2. Yes? And uh, so this is the, the coordinate horizontally and vertically. Now, if you have here a point, Eij, this root, uh, there is a very important thing in the case An. So this is specific for the case An, and I extended it. It appears to be new in that direction. I extended it also to the case of the orbifolds, B, C, D. Uh, there it's a little bit trickier. So Eij gives you a diagonal element, namely this one. Here it's a plus, and here's a minus. Yes, plus 1, negative 1, and the rest are zeros. Yes, so this is, a, this is the corresponding element Hij. Yes, which is Ei, I minus Ejj, or on diagonal, these, these become single vectors, EI minus EJ. Yes? Uh, so notice how you get it on the ribbon with two diagonals, yes? Here in the matrix itself, uh, you just go horizontally and vertically. Yes? And you get here plus one and here negative one. And uh, uh, look, this one, for instance, is over the diagonal, so you'll get the plus one again. Remember, they're periodic, yes? So there's a plus one again, and the rest are zeros. So this is a ribbon in a very concrete way in the matrix case, yes? And... Uh, uh, one more thing here. So the idea is that you have some uh, mirrors. These were the, the ones that I saw in order to make this, uh, this theory, and that's what we'll have in, uh, in one of our future uh, lessons. Do you see, you, you view this, so you look at this Hij. Once again, in the case An and in the orbifold case, B, C, D, uh, remember B, C, for instance, is a symplectic thing, yes? And when you work with symplectic matrices, you take them as a quotient of the An. You take it as matrices subject to some symmetry, yes? And now, uh, let's write here, for the case An, an and the BCDs, 
the uh, the roots are con are explicit or concrete vectors h i j so the formula for uh, the length of a root for inner product between roots and so on is given by these concrete vectors. Now, let's take a look here uh, at how these vectors appear. So there's a plus one here and the negative one because it's periodic. And look what happens is that there are two mirrors. Can you see them? So these were the... So I was trying to see what's the case I mean, what, what are the higher matrices uh, doing? Uh, so you can see here the mirrors, yes? The next one is, again, here it happens to be in the corner. So there are two parallel mirrors. These are the vile affine, the affine vile mirrors. So the yellow are the affine Vile group scaled, scaled by N, by this capital N, by the period. Yes, so the affine vile mirrors are normally at distance uh, uh, one, uh, one weight, but, uh, but here they are... Uh, and uh, notice that they come on weights, not on roots, right? So they are on weights. And these mirrors, let me write here, the mirrors are located at... Uh, I, remember we, we did this, so this is I plus J over 2, yes? And the other one is I plus J plus N, also over 2. The next one, the distance here is N weights. So the period, the period is n roots, and it starts in an arbitrary point. So the period, the diagonal period, is n roots. of SL2, so it would, it would have uh, the space between mirrors twice, a period. But again, the period of the matrices is, uh, is at uh, an arbitrary position with respect to the period of the mirrors, yes? And so what you're going to have, if you see here, if you remember from your childhood, uh, this is a kaleidoscope. That's exactly what you had uh, as a child. Uh, you'll see that the ones that you had as a child is exactly the one for SL3. So here you see you put a pebble on plus one in between the, the two mirrors, yes? Uh, let us uh, specify here how big, what's the space between these two mirrors? Look, there is here a weight which we don't use, and another, and uh, yes, so there is uh, a weight. Let me uh, check that I got it right. Yes, so this is, uh, yes, so what we have here should be the graph A3, and for some strange reason, this is, so this is here 3, 2, 2, and 3, 3, this one is correct. And this is here, 3, 3, so this is, uh, 
Yes, so the space in between, uh, do you see it has, uh, it should have, uh, let me see here, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. This is correct. These are four. And uh, uh, we should have here the graph A again in between the two mirrors. Uh, the only problem is that the graph A here appears to have to be of length 4, so this would be, the next one would be 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 again. And uh, yes, so there is something uh, strange. This is at half. So you see the the... Uh, the distance between mirrors should be three. If anyone can see it, that's why you have a, a mic. Uh, you should, we should check that here we have three, right? You see here we have three. The, the mirrors are reflecting each other. So in here you'd have, this is half. Yes, this is a weight here. So the, these are the, these are the three. So this here is a graph A3. Again, do you see as a graph between, as a space between mirrors? Yes, that's very important. That's, in a way, what the graph AN is. It's a cutoff of the weights of SL2. Yes, remember. The weights of SL2, if we started from here, this would be spin one half, spin one, spin one and a half, yes? And the spin two is cut off. Yes, that's where the mirror is. So you can find the graph A3. So you see, you can, you put here on the graph A3, which is a space between the two, the two mirrors, you put a red pebble, which is plus one, and it reflects into a blue pebble, which is negative one. Yes? So this is how you construct the element Hij in the case An. Yes? This tells you exactly what's going to happen in the higher case, where again the graph A will be the graph between mirrors, and you're going to put a, a red pebble in between and reflect it in the mirrors. Yes, exactly like here. Do you have any, any questions? So the, now, since we have this, we should also, for the case AN, it, it would be nice to see what's the inner product of a root. So this is a root... Uh, here, root Eij, here, uh, inner product with each of the others. So now you could, we can compute it uh, since it's, since we know the Hij, and you see, these are the things which have, these are the, the elements, remember that the matrix is tilted, which have the same I. So this line is the same. Let me draw it with two different colors here. So these are the things which have the same I. So these are I and something else. And these, this line, are the things of the form J and something else. Something comma J. Yes? As you can see in the, in the matrices, right? So the inner product with these would be one. And here it would be one as well. because they share one coordinate, yes? And here you would have uh, 
Uh, can you find out, so what is this? This should be EJJ. So this should be J, and we have uh, the position J. And here is the position I. And so now this reflects here and is going to give you, and this reflects here, and I leave it to you to compute that this would give you a negative two here and a negative one and negative ones here. So these are I try to keep the numbers correct, although the picture may look a bit strange. So this is the, uh, uh, this is, so from here it's repeated, yes? So this is the inner product of a root with all the others. This in the matrices. Uh, once again, this is EIJ, the corresponding root is HIJ, and these are the HI something, and these are the H something J. Yes, so they have inner product one, and here they switch. I and J switch positions, so this was EI something, this one is E something I, which when you take it, in a product with HIJ, it matches the one with a negative one. Yes, so this one, this one would have a, a, a plus one here, while this one has a negative one here. Can you see? So the point is that uh, the A graphs, it would be very nice to find a diagonal in general, but the A graphs have a diagonal. And on the diagonal, the roots become concrete, yes? So, uh, and now the formula that we have there, which is uh, uh, two minus T, two minus T1 G1 over one minus T1 G1 plus G1 square, Again, this is just the biharmonicity. It means that you take something here, then you take, you apply here G1, which is a horizontal neighbors. And then you apply, so this is times one, times T1, and this is times T1 square. Excuse me? T1 square. T1 square here. So you read Q1 square. Uh, the last term. Oh, last term. Thank you very much. This is, of course, T1 square, exactly. And here, you, once again, here you find the, the biharmonicity in the numerator. And of course, you'll find something like this in the higher case. Uh, you'll have some beautiful numerators, which, I mean, denominators, which, which tell you relations. Yes, so this is a relation. That's what happens with the generating series. So the, the denominator is a relation. And this tells you how the thing starts. Yes, it starts with two times the identity because the inner product of a root with itself is two. Yes. And then on the next row, you have the negative of uh, the neighbors. Yes, so this is two times. So this is root times root is two. And this is root times neighbor on graph, is negative one. Yes, that's why you have here negative G1, right? So uh, uh, look at it uh, 
Uh, oh, this is very strange. 2 minus T1 G1. This should, uh, yes, so let's, uh, uh, let's, uh, so the inner product with a neighbor, it should be negative one, but it should be plus one actually. So let's, let's uh, expand it. Just a bit. I may have reproduced it. Uh, uh, so uh, the the numerator. Uh, what we would have to expand this. So let's uh, uh, let's do it before we do anything else. Uh, Mathematica is very good with series. So this is a series. Uh, let me make it big here, and let's take a, a new file at 300, and we take here a series of uh, 2 minus Tg, T times G, uh, divided by 1 plus uh, Tg, 1 minus Tg, plus T square, and this is a series uh, around T, from T is equal to zero, that's our variable, and we should go, I don't know, let's say up to five, and uh, this is a series Ah, and this is correct, as you can see. Do you see if we expand the series, what we get is uh, these are the powers of t, yes? So this is 2. You can see the 2 here, yes? Then you can see uh, plus gt, which means we went one row down, this is t, and we took the neighbors. Then we went uh, one more row, yes, so we went t square, and what we find is g square, which is the neighbors taken twice, so this would be, g square would be the paths of length two, you see? And you'd have here, of course, you can go here and then take the neighbor again, so this is part of g square. Yes, so g squared gives you the paths on the graph, g squared, g cubed, and so on. So you take the path here, which would have a 2, and you subtract 2. Yes, so you see you get here 1, 0, 1. Yes, so these are the, the new neighbors, if you want. And so on. Yes, so if you substitute uh, here, uh, uh, you know, 2, two to be 2 times the identity and G to be uh, the matrix of the graph, then you'd get exactly that picture. There. Any questions? So let's do the same for the, uh, for the, the other series, which was, uh, I think it had a 1, right, on top. The first series, yes, it was a 1. And uh, if you do that, you'll find that it's the identity, so it starts, uh, th this is a fusion, it starts with a 1, then you go to the neighbors, GT, yes, then you go to the 2 times neighbor, that you subtract the 1 uh, above, yes? So you see, G, you, you subtract, uh, and so on. And these are well-known uh, polynomials, these are exactly the Chebyshev. Polynomials. Uh, the ones for fusion, 
Yes, they are the, uh, the polynomials. Chebyshev has, uh, has introduced two polynomials which are fundamental in approximation theory, which are cosine, so uh, P, uh, the, the first Chebyshev polynomials are uh, P of Pn of cosine of x is cosine of nx. So it's cosine of uh, nx written as a polynomial in cosine of x. Yes? And you can see why this is important, by the way, numerically, which may be interesting here if we ever want to do numerical approximations. The point is that this is a cosine, so it stays in between plus one and negative one. Yes? So the polynomials Pn of x in absolute value are less than or equal to 1 for, uh, for x of the, for uh, Pn of y, let's put it here, for y, for modulus of y less than 1. So they are, they look like this graphically. They are between 1 and negative 1, so they remain here in this square where they do a lot of things, and then they go out. Yes, and they are the best, uh, the best ones with this property. Yeah, and these are exactly the ones that appear here. So when we do these uh, for, the, for the higher formulae, these would be uh, uh, generalizations of the Chebyshev polynomials to the other simple uh, and semi-simple the algebras, which appear to be new. There is another polynomial. I'm not, uh, I don't know exactly what this one is. We should check. Uh, but uh, the other Chebyshev polynomial is uh, Qn of uh, uh, cos x again is uh, sine of uh, nx over sine x, which are more or less the quantum numbers, yes? Very good. So these are our, uh, our series. So this is a concrete representation of, uh, of SL. And, and let's take now one look, and then next, next time we'll prove these, uh, these formulae. Uh, at least we'll start by proving the uh, part of the, uh, I mean the part which is uh, similar to the ones that we proved for SL2. So here is a formula for uh, SL2. Uh, uh, look at it. What we have here are two unitaries instead of one like before, you see this, you should compare it with the one before. So you have here, let me see, they do appear. So you have here uh, U1 and U2. Uh, so these are the, the, the fundamental weights, yes? And then the representation corresponding to this fundamental weight U1, this is C to the 3. This is SL3 acting to C, C cube. Yes, and these are these, it has exactly these weights. U1, as you can see here from these vectors, this one would be negative U2. Yes, but these are written exponentially, so this is 1 over U2. Yes, and this one is U2 over U1. This is U2 minus U1, which becomes U2 over U1. Yes, so accordingly, you write the generators, the two generators, G1 and G2, in terms of two unitaries, which are the fundamental weights. You simply write here the multiplicities of uh, the representations. And um, uh, uh, do you see this thing, this vector in black, this is a vial vector rho. It's a sum of the uh, fundamental weights. 
And there's a first one which is off the mirrors. U1 and U2 are on the vial mirrors. The vial mirrors are not shown here. Yeah? So this, the, the span of U1 and U2 is the vial chamber. That's where you find the highest weights. That's, uh, that's a vial theory that we use. So here, this vector is U1. As you see additively, it will be U1 plus U2. So here it's U1 times U2, right? And the vial group permutes it by acting, and it acts actually on each UI individually, so you can see that each of them is a product, yes? And the formula which we wrote last time is the following. For the roots, you take these products, you see the U1 and U2, and you write 1 minus T1 U1 and 1 minus T2 U2. So on the ribbon, you have two directions. Yes, so this is a power series uh, in two variables. And you sum these things, as you can see here, you get, the, uh, uh, the, you get here a matrix. Imagine, once again, you, uh, you uh, bring these to the same denominator. So algebraically, you bring them together, they will be... Uh, uh, invariant, the result is invariant to the vial group by construction, yes? So as a result, you'll be able to write it in terms of this G1 and G2, yes? So you'll find a, a polynomial in G1 and G2, I mean a, a series actually, a, a, a fraction, rational fraction in G1 and G2. When you expand that, you'll get the inner product of a root with another root in the, wherever these series converge. So typically this is a, this is a, uh, a geometric series, each of them. So it converges forward. I mean, 41 is 0, 1, and so on, yes. But actually we'll use in the proof, uh, we'll use it one step backward as well. So you can imagine that you have a T1 inverse times, uh, uh, I mean, you know, a, a geometric series, you can make it geometric also backwards, right? So, so these are the roots, and these are the essential paths. So for the essential path, you, you have also a, a numerator, U1, U2, you see here, which, is, which are exactly these products. So these products will be the numerators, and with a sign, which you didn't have before, and you normalize by dividing with these signs. And let me uh, find now, so this is, uh, yes, let me find now uh, a, um, uh, in this Harvard, uh, let me see here, we should have the uh, honeycombs. And this is, uh, so in this, the, I have something about exactly this series. And look here, they're, they're computed. So this is, and uh, let me show you a bit what, uh, what happens. So here I wrote a little program which uh, reconstitutes them. So this is a, these are the series for the essential path. Look, they're, they're, they're quite uh, interesting. This one, uh, so since uh, physicists do use fusion, this one is, this formula uh, here is in the yellow book, uh, Conformal Field Theory by uh, Di Francesco and uh, Seneschal. It's in one of these, the exercises and they uh, uh, state as an open problem finding what's going on further, yes? As you can see, the, what's going on further is that there's a fairly hefty uh, numerator here. So the formula, once you bring it, uh, once you write it in terms of the generators, is much more complicated than the formula that we had on the blackboard, which and look what happens with the root in a product. So this one is for SL4 here. Do you see this, this expression? Yes? And um, 
This is the inner product of roots. So look, that's the one that we had there, yes? And the inner product between roots, even in the case SL3, which we had on the blackboard, you see it has a fairly complicated numerator. And look, if we try, if we uh, do the numerator for SL4, it goes on and on and on and on, yes? With the same denominator. So uh, no wonder that they couldn't find it uh, experimentally. Um, so now, what do you see here? Uh, let's look a little bit since uh, we have, well, we have one minute, but still we should find what are these two expressions in the, in the numerator, yes? And you see here you have three expressions in the, in the numerator for SL4, yes? So remember that in the case of uh, SL, uh, of SL3, So for once I'll be able to use the, well, I did use a little bit the color chalk, but now we'll use it more. So this is a hex. Remember this, these are the, so we'll have a, a hexagon like this. This will be a plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And uh, we'll continue this with something like this. Uh, yes, I think that this is it. Yes. So here. So again, this would be here minus plus and so on. And uh, now we can uh, do instead of this, we can take this one in red. You see, and uh, this one in orange. Uh, so this will be big. So this one in orange up to here. And you see that you have a relation between these four things. Yes, the sum of, the, of two of them is the sum of the other two. Yes, and uh, that's exactly the relation that you see in the uh, numerator there. Do you see one minus G1 T1 plus G2 uh, T1 square minus T1 cube? That, that turns out to be exactly this relation between uh, between the HIJs, and uh, in the case of uh, SL4, you have permitohedra, and there you have in each direction of the permitohedra. Remember, the permitohedron here has two hexagons and the square as main things. So each of them gives you one, one thing in the denominator with a similar relation. So the denominators are very easy to interpret. The numerators are monstrous, but uh, not for our formula. So we'll stop, uh, we'll stop here.